You go. Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today, we are going to talk about PR. We're going to talk about how you can use PR to leverage it for your business success. We've had a couple of episodes before where people have come on and talked about PR, but from a little bit of a different perspective. Today, Nina Daffe is going to guide us through what goes into a pitch. We're going to talk a little bit about the misconceptions and myths of, around PR and how you can get PR ready. Be sure and head over to the show notes after you listen, though, because I'm going to have the links to the other episodes as well so that you can learn even more about PR if you missed those episodes. We had one with uh, I interviewed Allie, who is a PR specialist, and we talked more about proactive PR. That's not what we're talking about today. So that one may be in combination with this one, really powerful for you as you start to use PR to grow your business. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to bring Nina Defe onto the Robin Graham Show. Welcome, Nina. Hey, thank you so much, Robin. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> Yes, of course. So Nina and I have a little history. We took a course with my dear friend, Brenna McGowan, who has been on the show a couple of different times. And she talked about her pace. I think it was her pace method for, or mm -hmm. for writing copy for a launch. And she's a pre-launch specialist. So I will also link that in the show notes. So the show notes for this episode are going to be really full of additional links. So you guys be sure and head over to those. But Nina and I met in Brenna's course, and she is just a light and a beautiful human being and a PR specialist. Mm -hmm. And it was time we, we bring this topic back to the surface because it's been quite a while since we talked about it. So Nina, before we dive in, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to this point in your journey? Oh, wow. Um, so as you know, Robin so greatly put it, I am a, a PR specialist, but I didn't actually start out that way. Um, very, very long story short, I um, actually originally started out blogging. Um, and it was about like the women of the Bible. And part of the reason for that is kind of growing up um, within a Christian household and also a very traditional Nigerian household as well. It can be very patriarchal. Um, it can be very much like, you know, this is um, a woman's place. This is what she's supposed to do. And unfortunately, I saw a lot of my female role models, you know, not be able to, to do exactly what they wanted to do to reach their full potential. So um, starting this blog was very much me exploring the women of the Bible to kind of see more inspiration and to get more of a, an, I guess, an idea of God's will for women. Um, a year into launching it, though, I was very unsatisfied of how it was growing. It felt very slow. It felt like it was just kind of a handful of people who were reading it all the time. Most of them I knew. <laughs> and so I was just really looking for a way to kind of push it and get it out there um and so I actually ended up taking um a PR course a PR program and I loved it because I'm naturally a writer I love speaking to people um and it just it came very naturally to me so I would post in the Facebook group all the time oh you know I've got this podcast oh you know I've just had this article published and I had people within the same course coming to me going how are you doing this and I remember being like but we're doing the same course course like I'm just following the program guys um and I think it was that that made me realize oh actually not everyone has this passion not everyone has this gift um these people you know they also started asking me you know can you share some of your templates with me like what are you putting in your emails and then they started to get success so I think it was really from there where I started to then okay sell those templates and I had people saying well could you do it for me could you coach me and it's literally sort of grown from from there on until now so that's that's the short story of it. <laughs> I love it though but I I want to point out a couple of things that you said because mm. when when you mentioned that you were taking the same course and you were having this phenomenal outcome and other people yeah. weren't and I want to emphasize that that happens a lot with online mm. courses and it comes from one maybe a a disconnect in why you're taking the course and what yeah. you're going to do with what you learn from the course, but also the willingness to take action with what you yeah. learn. And if you don't take immediate action, you lose what you're learning and 
it doesn't have the same impact. So I love Mm -hmm. that you said that because I think it's something that we can definitely emphasize. So if you're taking online courses, you may not get the same outcomes as somebody else, but it all depends on the action you take and the mindset you have as you're going through the course and what your goals are for the outcome. So I wanted to, I wanted to emphasize that. Um, And then I also want to say that I think it's a beautiful journey that you started from a place of passion to help other women see what they're, yeah. what they're worth through the stories we, we read yeah. in the Bible of, of these women. And I'm going to link in the show notes, a book by Mary DeMuth, and it's mm. about the women of the Bible. And I, the, the title is escaping me right now, but if, if anyone is interested in learning more about the misconceptions that we've held about even women in the Bible. I am going to link that in the show notes because it is so worth the read. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's very, um, it's really about, um, how we've been misled about the women of the Bible and how we can use their experiences to transform our relationship with God, but also our relationship with ourselves. So it was really good and relationships Mm -hmm. with other people. So I wanted to add, yeah, I wanted to add those little tidbits in. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Nina? No, I was just going to say how much I completely agree with with what you are saying. And I think that a lot of the times, whether it is with courses, PR, whatever the case may be, that can be a lot of what holds people back, isn't it? Oh, you know, I don't know. Will I actually get my ROI? Blah, blah, blah. But as you said, it's about you, your willingness to, to take action and your mindset, your goals and holding those in mind as you go through the process, you know? Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, something else you just said is with PR, I think fear also holds us back. It's like, Oh, what if, what if they say no? Or Mm -hmm. what if I don't have a good enough pitch? What if my story isn't grand enough to be accepted? But here's the thing. If we don't put ourselves out there, it's multi-fold, right? The disadvantages it's one, we're not getting our name out there so that we can grow. And two, we're not reaching the masses to have the opportunity to reach the people that God has called us to serve. And so we're doing a disservice to them if we're Mm -hmm. not putting ourselves out there. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's important to set that fear aside because listen, if you don't try, you're always going to have a no, but if you try and you pitch, you have an opportunity for a yes. So it's, it's really becomes a win-win because even if you're told no, you've at least planted that seed and they may come back to you later, or you have learned something about that pitch that now you can improve on. So Absolutely. with that being said, Nina, let's dive into, I, let's start with some of the misconceptions and myths around PR. Oh my gosh, yes. I think one of the biggest held myths is one that you just touched on, which is, what if my story is not grand enough? Who would choose me anyway? I think that really comes down to the um, belief that PR is only for an elite um, so we are very used to seeing, you know, people show up, you know, uh, in media who might be celebrities or who have millions of followers or subscribers. They've had a viral moment. You know, we look at ourselves sometimes, especially if we're just beginning and go, well, I don't fit that bill. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I, I love what you said, Robin, as well, about um, serving your your audience, you know, serving the people that you are called to. I think that's how we need to look at PR, that it's, it's a calling. It's just a, a greater platform, a greater stage for you to kind of get your message out there. And if you know how to do the research and you know how to find the platforms that actually align with your message, and what you'll find is that when you pitch, you'll have a greater synergy and therefore, you know, you're less likely to kind of get those, those no's and all of those sort of things. So it's not that PR is for an elite. It's just about, you know, getting in where you fit in, finding the right places um, and not just kind of throwing spaghetti against the wall and um, seeing what, what fits. Mm-hmm. Um, I think on the other side of that, people also have the uh, Oh, what's that movie um if you build it they will come um you know that oh, yeah. that whole idea yeah <laughs> I forget what it's called now but that whole idea of you know I've, I've set up my business I've set up my brand I've done everything that I need to and so come on everyone you know <laughs> come and interview me come speak to me and so you know you can have it where you're being proactive but actually you're doing it in the wrong places or in the wrong way or actually you're not being proactive 
enough right so it's also just that balance of knowing nobody comes knocking at the door you know of someone who they don't know who they are or or what they do so you do have to pro be proactive you do have to kind of put yourself out there you know um and those sorts of things um i think one more thing that i would say um about um sort of the, the misconception um of pr is actually exactly what you said about the, the fear and that whole thing of what what if they say no um a lot of people might get started and then they get that rejection and then it's like okay that's it no one wants me no one likes me I'm gonna stop and I also ha you know have had that even in the beginning of my journey and even now but you learn also to go all right like Robin said, it might be a no for now. And in which case I keep on sewing into that relationship and keep building until actually it comes back around. Or which is something that I have done, you look for platforms which are very similar or, you know, that might also like that message and you repurpose that pitch. And actually you find that, you know, it might not have been that there was anything wrong with your pitch or anything wrong with you. It just didn't serve that particular platform. But still, if, it's important, if the message is important enough, just put it back out there, you know? Mm -hmm. I love that. And so I want to emphasize a couple of things. One, mm -hmm. um, is with PR comes search engine optimization. And if you are a listener who does not want to spend 24 seven change social media, PR mm. is a great opportunity for growing your business. You can Absolutely. reach more people than you can reach on social media. And it attributes to your SEO, your search engine optimization, because when you're a guest on a podcast and they have show notes, those links come back to your website. So sure. that if it is a reputable podcast mm -hmm. with a good website yep. that is ranked, has a domain that's ranked, then you're going to have better chances of people coming to your website so that Google sees that you are an expert. Yeah. People are coming to you yeah. for information, for insight, and for value. So mm -hmm. I wanted to add that in, that it's it's a win-win because yeah. every time you have an opportunity for PR, you are driving traffic to the website. Okay. The other thing, Nene, that you mentioned was research. And mm -hmm. how to research to find the right opportunities for you. Do you have a tip for that? Yes, absolutely. So when I'm, um, you know, sitting down with my clients and I'm coaching them about how to find the right places, um, I actually give them a, a three-step um, framework to follow. So the first thing would think about you, right? A lot of the times when we start our platforms, whatever they may be, our services, our products, we tend to be our ideal clients. You know, we, we, we're usually selling something that we initially had a problem with. So think about what you actually like reading what do you where do you go for information what do you listen to and that in itself will let you know okay where you should be directing your your efforts the other thing to do um as well would be to think about you know some of your ideal clients so if you've already got clients you can ask them what they're listening to where you know what they're reading you know on facebook or on social media you know how we use polls and those sorts of things be very specific like don't just kind of do like a uh, uh, I guess a, a blanket statement, but you know, for example, to my uh mummy business women, you know, what do you listen to? So be very specific in who you're targeting, and people usually comment or you know come back to you and tell you, so you can also get ideas from there. And then the other one, which is um a method that I learned from Selena Sue, was the follow the the leader method which is basically um you know whoever it is that you kind of admire within your industry that you look up to you know look at where they have appeared and literally you kind of follow behind them follow the leader follow in their footsteps and that will literally help you to come up with your dream media list and know exactly where you know you you should be pitching Mm, I love that. Okay. So great, great tips. We also had another episode and forgive me because I can't think of the woman's name off the top of my mm -hmm. head, but she walked us through how to pitch to be on or how to find podcasts to guest on. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to link that in the show notes too. I mean, this is amazing. We have so many episodes that can link to this, but yet this one, that. this conversation is so unique in and of itself. So, yeah. but the nice thing is that we can layer information 
Yes. And that's so nice because you can go down that rabbit hole of learning yes. in a short period of time. Which is great. And, and if you don't have time to listen to all the episodes, uh, you can read the blog posts and they only take a few minutes. So it's really great, uh, great way to learn and get information. Okay. So Nina, let's talk about, we've kind of talked about how to get PR ready in terms of, you know, how to find these places we're going to pitch. And yeah. we've talked about um, the importance of pitching, but when you say get PR ready, what does that mean? Oh, get PR ready. So for me, when I think about getting PR ready, I use the analogy of rowing with both oars, right? If you just row with, with one, you can just go around in circles. Um, and so for me, the two oars, you know, or number one is just making sure that your brand is actually ready, right? So you are in a place where if an editor was to look at your website, for example, they would know exactly who you are, what you do. It wouldn't be confusing. They, You know, you, you would have the credibility there and it would be a no brainer to them to go, oh yeah, absolutely. I, I, can, I can see you would be an asset to our audience. I can see how this would be mutually beneficial. Yes, let's do this. But then on the other side, um, sometimes we can be so excited about, you know, getting on podcasts, you know, you know, getting on a, a you know, guest blogging or whatever it is, that we actually forget that it also needs to be mutually beneficial for us, right? And we hear all the time that when it comes to social media, we don't own those platforms platforms and so we should have you know a, a freebie a lead magnet to have them able to come onto our email list and nurture them and you know all of those sorts of things and it's the same way for for PR so when you're going on these platforms just remembering yeah Yes, the visibility is great and it's it's needed. It's what you want. But you also want a way to um, continue to nurture the relationship with that audience because you also don't own that audience, right? So as I said, it's just making sure you're brand ready, but also making sure you kind of got a way to attract over to your platform so you can, you know, get them into whatever, you know, funnels you might have and build that relationship as well. Mm, I love that. Okay. So good. So, so good. And you know, the, the one thing is too, that I wrote down is have a consistent message. And yeah. as a podcast host, when someone pitches me, I do look at their website. I do look at their social media because mm. I want to see how are they engaging? What are they saying? Are they aligned with my values? So it yeah. is really important to recognize mm -hmm. whether or not, or to recognize that you are putting out consistent and cohesive messaging, which Absolutely. goes along with your personal brand and, and all of that collectively. So from your website yeah. to your social media platforms, to LinkedIn, to uh, Pinterest, wherever you are, everything needs to be consistent and cohesive. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk now about what goes into a pitch. Mm. Yeah. So I think I'll start off with the what not to do. <laughs> Okay, perfect. <laughs> I think, um, so for example, the natural thing to do when you're writing like a traditional email or traditional letter is to introduce yourself, go into who you are, what you do, why you're an expert, all of that sort of jazz. Actually, um, when you're pitching the media, that's not what you want to start off with. You know, editors, influencers, hosts, they're very busy people. They typically get lots of pictures, lots of emails. And so as soon as they kind of open the email, yes, you want to build a rapport. So maybe start off by saying, hey, I love, you know, your show, your platform. You know, these are the episodes or, you know, these are the blog posts that, you know, really resonated with me and why be genuine. Have those, you know, few lines. But then what you really want to get into is, okay, having said all of that, this is how I think I can serve your audience. And these are the these are the, the ideas, you know, you might have multiple pitch ideas or maybe just the one, um, you know, that I think um, that I would like to put to you. And literally just put like maybe like a heading, for example. So you might do, you know, summary of article or, you know, summary of um, podcast idea. And then underneath that, literally just a, a 
I would say I try to keep usually to one paragraph, but obviously, you know, if you need to go into maybe two or three, that's fine. But being as concise as possible in saying, okay, this is the problem, you know, that people are facing in this particular area. And so this is the importance of why I want to talk about this thing. And this is how I believe that I can actually help your audience with it. And maybe some bullet points discussing, you know, exactly, you know, maybe what your framework is or, you know, how, you know, how you plan to lay it out. Then after all of that, once you've kind of, you know, um, you know, done a bit of flattery rapport building <laughs> and actually pitch your idea is when you might want to have like a little heading that says maybe short bio or mini bio, you know, it lets them know then who you are, what you do, and then like a link to either your website um, or your um, social media. I prefer to do the website, to be honest with you, um, and especially if you've got a press page where you can actually show them where you've actually um, appeared before so they can get a feel of you, so much the better. But that's that's a typical sort of basic structure of a mm -hmm. pitch. Okay, so, so many things to say here. That one, when you talk about... Um, the the intro and a little bit of flattery. I just want to caution listeners that people see right through the nonsense and don't use the same template without oh, updating absolutely. it. Yes. I get the craziest yeah. request and I'm like, have you even listened to my show? <laughs> and yeah. you know, they'll say, you know, whatever, but it's very evident that they have not listened to the show. And it's mm -hmm. very evident that they don't know the first thing about me as a host. So yeah be cautious when you do pitch. Like this isn't to scare you from pitching, mm -hmm. but just be aware that flattery can go really far if it's genuine. Like Nina said, don't fluff because we see right through that. At least I do. Like, I'm like, yeah. okay, check, gone, whatever. But, and if you have a PR person doing your pitches for you, make sure they're aware of mm -hmm. all of these things too, that they're going to be pitching you in a really professional manner, that they're double checking, they're crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's in terms of, you know, what they're saying about you. Do you really love this show? Have you listened to this show? Because if you haven't listened to this show, then maybe it's not going to be a good fit for you. So just Absolutely. be aware of what is being pitched for you if you do have a PR agent. Um, yeah. And I'm sure if you use Nina, it will be perfect because she's amazing. <laughs> a little plug. <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to say is that to put the link to the bio or not to the bio, to the website is important. Like that's the yeah. first thing I check too, because I want to know like, okay, is it professional? Is it clear and concise? And mm -hmm. they can access, anyone can access the links to your social media from your website. They can find mm -hmm. anything they need to know about you on your website. So the website yeah. is a great place. But the other thing Nina said that I really, really want to emphasize is to have a PR page, a, like a media speaking page, because when you have that and people can readily see where you have been present before, it makes a big difference in terms of if they see you as credible, if they see you as um, someone who's had experience yeah. and someone who's going to actually perform and give a good interview. And the yeah. other thing that does for the host that you're pitching to, they see, oh, wow. Okay. So they're going to backlink to my site. This is great. They're going to share mm -hmm. what the opportunity that I've given them, they're going to share that. So it's a win-win for the host, mm -hmm. for the host's audience, and then for you as well. Yeah, I think even um, I love what you said about um, the, the flattery and being cautious with that as well, because to be honest with you, even before pitching, I am very huge on building a relationship with the host, especially of a podcast um beforehand because you 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 actually want to be comfortable you know having a conversation with someone is it's quite intimate you know and you want to know that actually you know you see someone you are going to get on well with like Robin said you do have similar ideals beliefs you know whatever it is some sort of common ground and so don't be don't feel I think even 
the the flattery can sometimes give away desperation right don't be desperate like see this as a long game you know and the same way there's a difference between an acquaintance and your best friend and it's usually the length of time so don't be afraid to follow the person on social media be on their email list interact with them and really just build that rapport before you even do pitch not only will that actually help you, um, you know, nine times out of 10 with the pitching process, because they'll recognize you, which is always going to be a plus, but actually you will feel confident that this is actually going to serve you um, and that you'll have a good time, you know, on, on the podcast or, you know, writing for this platform as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's so important. Okay. So Nina, last question for you. Sure. How has, how has your faith helped you along your business journey and growing your business oh my goodness I love this question I um I always say to be honest with you I feel like the the entrepreneurship journey in and of itself is a faith walk because you are just creating something out of nothing like you're taking something that does not exist <laughs> and birthing it and 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 putting it out into the world and so I think for me um that has really 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 been huge um in terms of you know growing my business and and just stepping out a lot of the time in faith because as I said you haven't got the evidence um of what it is that you're trying to create um a lot of the times I, especially in those sort of scenarios, I always think about Sarah, you know, Abraham and Sarah, obviously both, but Sarah herself in just, you know, God saying, you know, go, go to a land and I'll just show you, you know, you'll know it when you see it, basically. <laughs> we had no idea where they were going. You know, yeah, you're going to be a father and mother of nations and yet you've never had kids before. You know, it's, it's just all of those sorts of things. And I think for us as, you know, entrepreneurs and business people, it can very much be like that, where he gives us this vision, he gives us this idea and it's like, okay, go create. And especially if you're like someone like me, who has not necessarily come from an entrepreneurial family, you know, um, it's not necessarily been um, something that I even was exposed to, uh, I would say. And yet here, here I am. And that has literally just been step by step every day just walking in faith and um, because of that just having to kind of hang on to God and be in his word and really hear from him you know on a daily daily basis so yeah it's it's, it's very heavily influenced my business I would say yeah mm, I love that and I love the example of Sarah it really is trust and perseverance right yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it and I it made me think of in Corinthians, when Paul talks about how he, he can't brag about himself, he can only brag yes. about his weaknesses because God yes. has given him all of his strength comes through God. And I think that's just such a beautiful um, way to look at it is that we don't know what we're doing. I mean, no. as entrepreneurs, we really <laughs> don't know. So to have yeah. that guidance and to tap into the resource of our, you know, intuition, which is the Holy Spirit talking to us, I think it's so important and powerful. So thank you for sharing that. Nina, Absolutely. how can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you and potentially work with you? Yeah. So um, my website is faraboverubiescollection.com. Um, and it literally, it has, you know, everything on there, my, my social media, all my handles are, are that as well, actually. So if you're looking for me on Instagram or Facebook, it's that too. Um, and actually, before we hit record, I was saying to Robin, you know, especially because we were talking about um, pitch templates and, you know, what it what makes a good pitch and all of those sort of things, I actually do have... Um, the perfect pitch packet, which is like a bundle of PDFs for, you know, if you want to pitch articles, if you want to pitch guests on your podcast, you know, whatever, you you to be a guest, it's all on there. And usually it's $197, I believe, but I have a discount code that I can give to you guys. So it can be $37 because, you know, I'm very grateful to be here. Very grateful that you've tuned in. Um, and so we'll, we'll sort all of that out <laughs> so you can have access to that as well. 
Awesome. So I will put that when Nina gives me that discount code, I will put that in the show notes. Another reason to go read those show notes <laughs> and you. listeners. If you do click on the show notes from the podcast app, I just, or Spotify or wherever you're listening, make sure you go to the link that says, read the full show notes and access all the links because we're limited in our numbers of characters that I can put in the show notes when I publish the episode. So make sure you actually read the, the blog post that will have all of these links and all of the information so that you don't miss out on that incredible gift that Nina is giving you. So Nina, thank you so much for being here. I am truly grateful. I love your light, your spirit, everything about you. So thank you. And listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, please be so kind as to leave us a rating and review because that's what allows me or helps me get more attention for the show and bring great guests like Nina on to provide such value to you. And also, if you know anyone who is starting their entrepreneurial journey or interested in growing their business, please share the episode with them because, I mean, come on, it's really hard to do this journey by yourself. So let's help everybody else out and share the episode too. So thank you for being here. I wish you all a wonderful, fabulous week, and I will see you all next week.